Hi to all, I am Madhvi from the Triple Department in Anamachari Institute of Technology and Sciences in Tirupati. So up to now you can see the driving point functions in the one port network. Now you can see the driving point functions for the two port network. So what is the driving point function is nothing but we can take the either the ratio of voltage to current or current to voltage. So in the driving point functions you are having the two ports here so in the first port you are having the 1 1 dash and the second port 2 2 dash so for the first port you are having the voltage as v1 of t and current as i1 of t next in the second port you are having the voltage v2 of t and i2 of t so this is from the figure so from this you can say that whatever the ratio of the same variable suppose if you are taking the first port so V1 of T by I1 of T, so that is the ratio of voltage and current in the first port or the voltage to current ratio in the second port which will be equal to driving point function. So how you can define means the driving point function is nothing, the driving point impedance is nothing but it is the ratio of V1 as, V1 of S and I1 of S at the first port or V2 of S to I2 of S in the second port. You can derive that the driving point impedance at the port 1 is Z11 of S, the driving point impedance at the second port is nothing but Z22 of S. So in the first port, you can write the voltage and current equation as Z11 of S is equal to V1 of S by I1 of S. And the from the second port, Z22 of S is nothing but V2 of S by I2 of S. Similarly, if you are seeing the driving point admittance function, it will be same, but you can represent the driving point admittance as y11 of s and y2 of s so for the first port what is the driving point admittance is nothing but i1 of s by v1 of s and y22 of s is nothing but i2 of s by v2 of s so it is nothing but the reciprocal of the driving point impedance or you can say that it is the ratio of current to the voltage either in the first port or in the second port so next one what are the transfer function in the two port networks so transfer function is nothing but it is the ratio of Laplace transform of two variables. One variable is nothing from the first port and the other variable from the second port. So in the driving point imprints, you can take the voltage and current will be in the same port. But if you are taking the transfer function, so one will be from the first port and another will be the second port. If the voltage is first port with current in the second port or the voltage in the second port is nothing but current in the first port so from this according to this equation you can have the different transfer function first one is voltage ratio transfer function what is the voltage ratio transfer function is nothing but it is the ratio of laplace transform of voltage at one port to the voltage at the other port so in this voltage ratio transfer function the voltages you are answering v1 and v2 so it is the ratio of v2 of s by v1 of s you can denote the transfer function as g of s equals to v2 of s by v1 of s similar to what is the current ratio of the transfer function is nothing but it is the ratio of laplace transform of the current to the from the one port to the current at the other port so it can be represented by alpha of s so alpha of s is nothing but i2 of s by i1 of s or you can say i1 of s by i2 of s either you can take next one transfer impedance function so in the first and second you can take only current ratio or voltage ratio that is uh, having only currents are only voltages in the transfer impedance we are having both voltage and current but only the difference is we can take the voltage at the one port and the current at the other port so what is the transfer impedance function is nothing but it is the ratio of laplace transform of the voltage at one port to the current at the other port so if, uh, based upon this you can have the two types of the transfer impedance either from the first to second or from second to first you are having the two equation suppose if you are taking z21 of s is nothing but here z21 is nothing but here first one is represents the voltage that is v2 of s and the second one first one that is the current in the first port z1 of z12 of s so one voltage in the first port and the second port we are having the current so v1 of s by i2 of s so this is about the transfer impedance function it is nothing but it is the ratio of 
Laplace transform of voltage at one port to the current at the other port. So transfer uh, impedance is nothing but it is uh, opposite to the transfer impedance function or you can say it is the ratio of Laplace transform of current at one port to the voltage at other port. So similar to that you can represent y12 of s and y1 of s. So based upon this y21 of s is nothing but i2 of s by v1 of s and v y22 of s is nothing but i1 of s by v2 of s. So these are all about the transfer function in the two port network. Next, if you are seeing the problem, so first take the problem for the given two port network, find the driving point impedance function and voltage ratio transfer function. So if you are taking the circuit diagram, here in the first port you are having the R element and the C. In the second port you don't have any elements. So first port voltage is V1 and second port current is, sorry, first port current is I1. From the second port voltage is V2 and current is I2. So I already told whatever the circuit you can transform the circuit that is you can convert the circuit in terms of the S parameters. So what are those? So R will be no change here. So if you are seeing this, this R value will be no change here and the C value will be you can get 1 by SC. So what is the voltage ratio function here? Here they ask the what is the voltage ratio transfer function and driving point impedance function. So voltage ratio is nothing but V2 of S by V1 of S and the driving point impedance nothing but V2 of S by I1 of S or V1 of S by I1, I2 of S. So if you are seeing what is the transfer function? V2 of S by V1 of S. So from the circuit, what we are taking? V2 and V1 value. So here, if you see that the voltage V2 is equal to, so Vt is nothing but the voltage across this. So if you see this, V1 into 1 by SC by R plus 1 by SC. Why? Because here the current is divided into 2. That is 1 will be here and another will be divided. So the voltage V2 is nothing but the voltage across the 1 by SC. So what is the voltage across the 1 by SC is nothing but. So here what is the V2 voltage is nothing but it is the voltage across 1 by SC. So you can get V2 is equal to 1 by SC into, so what is the current? I1. So if you see the problem, so what are those? V2 equals to 1 by SC into I1. So what is the I1 value is nothing but this total value. So V by total value. So V1 by, so V1 by R plus 1 by SC. So what is the I1 value is nothing but I1 is equal to V by R. So V is nothing but V1 and R is nothing but R plus 1 by SC. So in place of I1 you can substitute this you can get V1 into 1 by SC by R plus 1 by SC. So from this what you are getting V2 by V1 as 1 by SC by SCR plus 1 by SC. So you can get V2 by V1 as 1 by SRC plus 1. So this is the voltage ratio of transfer function. So next if you want to find the transfer function so see the transfer function here so for the finding of that either one circuit will be open circuited so i2 is 0 means what is the current what is the open loop here so if you see this if the i2 value is 0 you can get only this loop so if the i2 is 0 means you are having only this loop and the current flowing is i1 so what is the loop equipment v v1 is equal to i1 into r plus I1 into 1 by SC. So if you see this, we can get the expression as V1 is equal to I1 into R plus 1 by SC. So what is the driving point impedance is nothing but it is the ratio of V1 of S by I1 of S. From this, so V1 I1 is already here. So if you see the equation, you are having the V1 and I1. So V1 by I1 is nothing but R plus 1 by SC. So V1 by I1 is nothing but SCR plus 1 by SC. So this is the total driving point imprints. So in this way you can find the driving point imprints and the transfer function. So next if you want to see the second problem. So in this also you can find the one transfer function that is Z12 of S and Z11 of S. So Z11 is nothing but V1 of S by I1 of S and Z12 of S is nothing but. So one voltage in the first port and the second port current. So V2 of S by I1 of S. So what is the Z11 is nothing but 
similar to that you can take the one loop here by putting the i2 value as 0 so what we are getting here so this value is 0 means you have answered a one loop so v1 of s is nothing but r into i of s and this inductance is nothing but sl into i of s so here you are getting r plus ls into i1 of s so v1 of s by i1 of s is nothing but z11 you are getting r plus ls next what is the v2 value so if you are open circuit the second value that is there will be no current here means what is the v2 value is nothing but it is the voltage across the inductor so v2 of s is equals to i1 into sl so what is the i1 value here so if you see the i1 value here i1 of s into ls so what is this v2 of s by i of s you can get ls so man king column z12 of s so what is that v2 of s by i1 of s what you are getting ls so this is the z11 of s is equal to r plus s ls and z12 of s is the ls from the circuit next you can see the one more problem that is so here you are having the both parallel connection and the series connection if you see that you can calculate the transfer function that is the voltage ratio transfer function here so in the third problem you have to find the v11 of s and v2 of s so here the z11 and so first see the circuit here 1 by cs and r1 will be in the parallel so what is the parallel value is nothing but r1 r2 by r1 plus r2 from this r1 into 1 by cs by r1 plus 1 by sc so next what you are getting z1 of s is nothing but r1 by sc by sc r1 plus c by sc that is r1 by SR, sr1 c plus 1 so next if you are redrawing the circuit what you are getting here means so z of s this is the equal resistance of the two valves that is the r1 and 1 by sc so this is the total circuit from the above value from based upon the equivalent value so here what is the loop so if you are taking the loop here so in the first loop you can apply v1 of s is nothing but i1 of s into z plus r2 into i2 of s so here i1 of s is common so by common this you can get i1 of s into z plus r2 next v2 of s is nothing but r2 into i1 of s so this is the from the first equation you are getting the v1 of s is nothing but i1 of s next v2 of s so what is the v2 of s is nothing but the voltage across the r2 the voltage across the r2 is nothing but v2 of s so v2 of s is equals to i1 of s by r2 so we have to find the v1 we sorry v2 by v1 value so what is the v1 and v2 value here is nothing but here you can find the v1 of s value and the v2 of s value here you have to find the ratio of v2 of s by v1 of s so what is the value of the v2 of s is nothing but z plus r2 and v2 of s is nothing but r2 so what is the v2 of s r2 by v1 of s is nothing but z plus r2 so r2 by what is the z value is nothing but here you can find the z value value as r by r1 by src plus 1 if you are putting the r1 by src plus 1 plus r2 so by solving this equation you can get the expression as r2 into sr1 sr1 c plus 1 by r1 plus r2 plus r1 r2 into ac so next what you are getting is so in this equation you can common the r1 r2 and c so here r1 r2 c is the common in this also you can common the r1 r2 c so what we are getting r1 r2 c common c summit you can get s plus 1 by r c in the denominator r1 r2 into c common c summit you can get s plus 1 by r1 c and 1 by s uh, sorry 1 by r2 of c so these are the expressions you can get the by commoning the r1 r2 into c so here r1 r2 c and r1 r2 c will be cancelled each other you can get s plus 1 by r1 c by s plus 1 by r1 c plus 1 by r2 c so this is the voltage to ratio transfer function or one of the transfer function in the two port network so next topic is nothing but what are the poles and zeros of the 
network function so why because if you are taking the network function whatever the transfer function it having the number of poles and zeros in this so why where, where we can get the poles and zeros is nothing but by taking the one transfer function if you see the transfer function there will be the number of elements so based upon it we are having the uh, one general form as h of s is equals to n of s by d of s that is equals to a naught into s power m plus a one into s power m minus one up to a m and b naught into s power n plus b one into s power n minus one up to b n so by factoring that is if you are having the square term means you can use the formula minus b plus or minus square root of b square minus four ac by two a or if you are having the more number of factors is in the equation means you can common the values by taking the factorization so what we are getting means a naught by b naught is equals into s plus z one into s plus z two and up to s plus z i and s plus z m so here also in the denominator number of poles so whatever the roots in the numerator n of s that will be represented as a zeros and the denominator function that is the p represents the number of poles in the network function and s is nothing but the complex plane so already i discussed uh, we are always take the representation in the in terms of the frequency for ac network so if you are seeing the behavior so you can decide the poles and zeros based upon the equation what we are getting so here the poles are called as a natural frequency of the network how you can represent the phase and curve means based upon the number of poles and the number of zeros so how you can rep represent the poles and zeros means if you are seeing the problem so a function z of s is equals to s plus 4 by s so here the first one is the numerator it is the denominator so based upon the numerator what you are getting the zero value so what is the zero value is nothing but s plus 4 is equals to zero so what is the s value is nothing but minus 4 so the zero value is minus 4 and s only s there are no there will be no any term plus the term so the pole value is zero how you can represent mean you can represent the pole value as cross mark and zero as zero so here one pole and one zero so pole will be at zero point so you can represent the cross mark at the zero point and minus four is represent the zero so you can represent the minus four so in the complex pin it's kabati sigma and j omega so real part is the sigma and complex plane is the j omega you can represent the point at minus 4 next similarly if you are seeing the next problem what are this z of s is equals to 2s by s square plus 16 so based upon this you can draw the pole zero plot is nothing but so first take them so if you are seeing the numerator there will be no any factor so the number of zeros in the numerator is zero next you should find the poles in the denominator how you can means so s square plus 16 so this is nothing but it is in the form of a square minus b square if you are factor that term means you can get s plus j4 and s minus j4 what we can get a square minus 4j square what you are getting s square plus 16 so same value you can get so what are the tall poles means so s plus 4j is nothing but 1 4j so this from this s plus s plus 4j is equal to 0 means one value is minus 4j and the second value s minus 4j is equal to 0 what is the value s equals to 4j so you are getting the two poles as 4j and minus j, 4j so you can represent this in the complex plane s represents the complex plane same as the first problem that is in the real part you can represent the sigma value and the real part j omega so if you are seeing the zero value where you can get the zero value so at the zero point so in the zero point you are having one zero you can represent the zero as zero symbol next you are having the two poles one is plus 4j and minus 4j so you can represent one 4j value and minus 4j value in the diagram that is in the plot next if you see the third problem so this is also same 1 by s plus 2 here there will be no s term in that so you can say that in the first numerator there will be any s term that is there will be no poles in that means you can get the zeros at the some infinity point and 
s plus 2 is the denominator. What is the pole value is nothing but s plus 2 is equal to 0. You can get s equals to minus 2. So at minus 2 you are getting the one pole. You can represent the pole as cross mark. So this is the cross point. This is the representation of the pole 0 plot for the y of s equals to 1 by s plus 2. Similarly, if you are seeing the one more problem, so 2s by s plus 2 into s square plus 2s plus 2, find the pole 0 plot. So, in the first numerator, s equals to 0. So, 1, 1, 0, s equals to 0. In the denominator, 2 terms is there. So, s plus 2 is equals to 0, s equals to minus 2 is the 1 pole. So, next one more equation is there, that is s square plus 2s plus 2. So, what are the poles means? We can't know. So, what is the equal expression for this means? So, already you know the quadratic equation that is s equals to minus b plus or minus square root of b square minus 4ac by 2a. So, by solving this you can get minus 2 plus or minus square root of b is nothing but 2 square minus 4 into 1 into c by 2. So, by solving this you can get minus 1 plus or minus j. So, what are the poles means? One pole is the minus 1 plus j and minus 1 minus j. Totally minus 1 plus j and minus 1 minus j and one more is minus 2. So, these are the poles and having only one zero value. So, you can represent the value as. So, here you can write this in the complex frequency. So, sigma j omega. So, in the j term you can represent the complex values. So, in the, here the real values. So, what we are representing here? First 0. What is the 0 value? So, if you see the what is the 0 value? I think but 0 is the 0 value. Here you can represent the 0 value in the 0 point and it will be represented as one circuit. Next, you can represent the poles. You can represent the poles by cross mark. 1 pole at minus 2. So, you can represent the pole at minus 2. Here both will be having minus 1 and minus j and minus 1 plus j. So, minus 1 minus j is nothing but minus 1 in the real part and minus j in the denominator, sorry, negative plane. What you are getting? So, the play pole will be it exists like this. Similarly, what is the minus 1 plus j? So, say minus 1 but positive value means one pole here is there. So, this is the representation of the pole zeros from the transfer function in the system. Next, the last topic, the restrictions on the location of the poles and the zeros of the network and function. So, you can see the restrictions of the net. We are having them mainly two rule, six rules in the circuit. So, if you see the six rules. So, first point, the coefficients of the polynomials that is the A of S and B of S. So, A of S and B of S is nothing but the numerator and denominator. A of S is the numerator and B of S is the denominator. So, the coefficients must be real and positive. So, there will be any negative term in the numerator value. Second one, poles and zeros in the complex or imaginary must occur in a conjugate pair. So, there will be some pair. Next third one is nothing but the real parts of the all poles and zeros must be 0 or negative. So, whatever the poles and zeros must be 0 or negative in the real part. Next fourth one the polynomials so what is the in the numerator and the denominator it cannot be missing any missing term between those highest to lowest value if you are taking the s power 4 plus s, s cube plus 2 s square so any one term is missing in the numerator or denominator that will be not exist for the power 0 function next in the fifth equation uh, fifth point the degree of the numerator uh, denominator polynomial may differ by 0 or one only. So, if you are seeing the numerator and denominator, whatever the degree, that is s power 4, a pi not in the a point degree represents just the, they may define by 1, 0 or 1 only, not getting any more difference. And the last one, the lowest degree in the numerator or denominator may differ in degree by at most 1. So, lowest degree kuda, there will be some difference, that is only 1. So, these are the restrictions for pole 0 plot. So, if you are seeing the one transfer function z of s is equal to s plus s power 4 plus s square plus 1 by s power 4 plus 2s square minus 2s plus 10. So, it can represent the plot or not means 
so if you are seeing this in this function is not suitable for the representation of the imprints in a two uh, one port network why because so if you are observing the numerator so s power 4 plus s square plus 1 there will be one coefficient is missing so in the pole 0 plot i already told one point is nothing but there will be no missing term in the transfer function so here one term will be missing here so this is not used for the representation of the one port network next if you are seeing there in the denominator so all must be positive this must be positive 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 but if you are seeing minus 2 yes that is one coefficient is negative so all will be positive values so for that purpose it will be not suitable for the representation of the imprints in the one port network so based upon the rules you can say that there will be exist of the poles on zeros in the networks or not so these are all about the networks functions thank you